Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about a way to repair an old dead inflatable dinghy. We do a Show Us Your Dinghy series, and we talk about all kinds of options for having a way to get off and on your boat, you know, a small boat to carry along with you. You might notice we haven't talked about what most people have yet. We haven't talked about inflatable dinghies. Basically, everybody has one of those, but mostly, I don't like how they fail. The world is kind of becoming full of these old dinghies once they just give up the ghost. They'll either get so many holes in them that it's not worth patching them anymore, or their seams actually open up after the glue fails. This is so common when you're out in cruising areas, you can look around and find uh, literally piles of dinghies at times. There's a place in the Bahamas where there's like eight of them. Someone left one on a beach and it became like acceptable to throw your dinghy away on the beach. Okay, that's a whole nother rant. What I'm gonna talk about here is, if you're on a short budget, or if you're out where you just can't fix it, you're out here where you can't buy a new dinghy, and if you can't fix your dinghy, we found a surefire way of fixing an old dinghy. It works really well, and uh, it might even be worth finding one of those old scrap dinghies and taking this method and just having a useful dinghy once you've applied this. Here's what happened. I've got a good friend here, and he and his family are cruising, and their dinghy failed. The seam opened up. Um, if you don't know a lot about these inflatable dinghies, there's usually multiple air chambers in them. And the starboard aft air chamber failed. And then the port aft air chamber failed. The front one stayed intact. And since he's in Luperon Bay right now where there aren't any real big waves, he was able to travel around and use it more or less because, well, the front one was there and it is a hard bottom. So there's enough boat to it that it didn't take out a lot of water. But, you know, he's really trying hard and he's getting glues and the glues are very expensive and hard to come by and gluing them together and then they're failing someplace else and he's just having all this problem. Well, we uh, were in a restaurant and having a few beers and, uh, you know, very often cruisers get together uh, over a few beers and solve the world's problems. This time we actually solved one and here's what happened. I had an idea some time ago. I was trying to come up with a solution so that my aluminum dinghy wouldn't bash into the side of Temptress or other boats and do damage. And I'd done this in the past with regular boat fenders, but I didn't like them for various reasons. I ended up doing it a, a different, more conventional way now that I'm very happy with. But in the process of thinking about it, I said, wouldn't it be nice if I had an inflatable collar around the outside? How can I make an inflatable collar? Well, I'm not up to welding or gluing or doing all the work that's required to basically build an inflatable boat. So I got thinking about it more and I realized if I just made a collar out of something that wouldn't hold air, but was strong, and then I shoved air bladders into that area, uh, as long as I didn't fill the air bladders full and left them kind of floppy, but jammed them in there, the outer structure would be all the strength and the air bladders would just be responsible for holding on to the air. And I actually bought a gross, a dozen dozen beach balls, little beach balls. And the idea was to like, you know, do this and jam them in. Uh, as an aside, it would have been a great idea because even if a, like a, a, a nail on a dock were to pop one of the beach balls right through the cloth, all you'd have to do, you would still have most of them. You wouldn't let all your air out and eventually you'd open up your access port and just shove another one up in there and close it off and you'd have this structure still. Anyway, I was saying, man, I wish I had all those beach balls again. Um, by the way, we've been giving them away to kids everywhere we've gone. We're down to like, I think one. Uh, and he said, ah, oh, it's a good idea, Clark. I wish I knew where I could get these dunnage bags. He was a truck driver in England and he knew about a, a product that's used in shipping. And he described it to me and I, I said, you know, there's an American company called Uline and you can order all that stuff easily. Well, he did. This is what we ended up with. And these are not terribly expensive, different sizes. In fact, I'm gonna put this up. So if you want this exact thing, here's all the numbers. 
And what they're for is if you have a cargo that could shift around and you want to lock it into place, you put one of these in and then inflate it or a bunch of these in and inflate it. And it's like massive packing peanuts that custom form, except they're reusable. They're really tough. They're, uh, you wouldn't want it out in the sun for a long time, but they're made way better than like any pool toy, you know, kind of vinyl. More importantly, the valve, the valve's tremendous. It has the same kind of quick release filling valve that a lot of dinghies have, at least the core part is. So the idea is, you open up a seam on the dinghy, and in his case, they were open for him, that was convenient, and you shove one or two of these dunnage bags down in as far as you can and get it in there and then inflate it. In his case, he had to have one kind of pointing aft and inflated it mostly and shoved it down in and put another one in going forward in the same area and inflated that one pretty hard. It wasn't actually inflating it hard, but it was inflating the space in a solid way and locked it off and then closed over the seam. Now the seam didn't have to hold air anymore. And in fact, if you had a big opening seam, you could just like sew it with uh, like coarse string and pull it up like a corset and tie it off. Um, this is going to work for a long time because the sun will never touch this. This isn't under any particular stress because it's not fully inflated itself. It's like being hugged by the outer inflatable cloth. The outer inflatable cloth, the stuff that was already there, is actually really good with sun, you know, um, as <laughs> compared to other uh, materials. It's tough as hell, they are. The problem is when they get little holes in them, but little holes won't matter because they're just hugging and becoming the hull again. It's kind of like an American football. There's a bladder inside and there's leather on the outside. The leather is all the strength and all the toughness, but it would never hold air and the bladder on the inside just holds air. Anyway, I had to share this idea. It, uh, if you had an inflatable dinghy, these things are not very expensive and they fold up real small. You could have a few of these on board and you know you could always fix a chamber even if the glue didn't do the job. I'd like to get this idea out because some of those old dead dinghies they're like technically perfectly good boats still, except for the fact that they won't hold air. And if you're really short on budget, you can get one for nothing. I mean, literally nothing. People might pay you to take one away. And um, I think he bought a whole box of these for a hundred bucks. So you get some of these, you stuff them in, you, you lock it back down, however you do, sew it, whatever. And you can have a serviceable dinghy for a good long time. And hell, you can take these out and move to the next dinghy when you find a better one along the way. One of the ideas that showed up with a couple boaters having beers. And uh, we share our ideas and I hope it helps you. Bye from Temptress. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, thanks for liking, subscribing. If you like this idea and you use it, damn it, you better subscribe. Bye.